People are often asking me what I think is the most underappreciated or underused CSS property or function or ability or whatever you want to call it. I found it really hard to come up with one single one. There's a lot of good ones out there. So in this video, we're exploring five properties or things that you can do with CSS anyway that I think are probably underused. And sometimes that's even by myself. I should probably use a few of these a little bit more often. Hello my friend and friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to fall madly deeply in love with CSS and if not deeply in love with it, at least to be a little bit less frustrated by it. And to help that happen, I do think that understanding more about CSS is always a good thing. And sometimes there's some of these properties or values or abilities that CSS has. It lets them do things that maybe they thought weren't possible or that were a lot harder than they actually are. So let's not wait around. Let's go and jump in and see what the first one is. All right, so to check all of these out, we are here in CodePen. So the link to all the CodePens I'll be looking at are linked down below in the description. So if you want to play around with them, they'll be in their finished state. You can play around with it a little bit. We're going to look at this first page here for a few of the different ones we're going to be doing and the very first thing we're going to take a look at is the selection pseudo class uh, pseudo select pseudo element I guess it's a pseudo element I'm saying underused I do see it come up from time to time but it's one of those things that when you are on a site and you go to select and the color is different it matches the color scheme it just it makes me so happy and it really is one of those little micro interactions almost that help the overall experience and it just adds that little touch that makes the site feel more polished. Um, so you can just set a background on it and you can get a nice selection just like that and you can see it's changed the selection color and there are only a limited amount of things you can do on here. You can't just go crazy and change everything but let's just say you decided to make the background uh, black and if I made the background black then I can't read my text so you can change also the color of your text so I could make my text then be white or you know what just for fun let's make it a different color, color red and you can go and select and look at that you get these this is this is not what I'm talking about when I'm saying the nice little touches you might make on your site that help polish it up the doing it wrong I guess could ruin the experience as well uh, but one interesting thing that comes up with this that I didn't realize until today if you take this and you do a background of black and you don't change the text color it's not going to do it um, and it's actually doing the inverse so if we just come here and I put a paragraph and I say the color on all my paragraphs is red. It's all, it's gonna work when I select here, but this, which still has a black color on it, it changes it to white. So it will actually invert the color of your selection if it matches. So if I made the selection color red, you can see it's working here, but it's gonna invert the color of the selection there to make sure that people can still read the text. Um, that is something, just something to know about. And if this is interesting to you, it's pretty easy to pick up, but there's a link in the description to a video where I did deep dive this a little bit more um, if you do want to play around with the selection at all. So that is that one out of the way. Now let's move on to the next one, which is current color. And current color is not a property. It's a, it's a value that we can assign to um, things. So I'm going to use our block quote here to highlight how this is working. So let's just select it, or I should have it somewhere here. Uh, block quote, there it is. So with my block quote, let's move this stuff out of the way. There we go. So with my block quote, what I could do is some, a lot, it's really often you get like a bar that comes down on the side here, right? So you might do a border left. And did you know the default for borders is actually current color? Um, so say you do a border left of three pixels solid, it's going to match the color of your text. So you can see it's matching it there. Let's do like 10, make it a little bit bigger. And so if I change the color here, color is red. Now the color of that will actually change with it. That's kind of cool. And as I said, it's because it's using current color like that. Not very CSS-y. <laughs> we got the, the camel case coming in here, so a little bit different, but the current color is going to take the color of something. Um, so if ever you're using pseudo elements to do something, so say you wanted this border, but you don't actually want it touching, you sort of want it offset a little bit. So to show how that would work, we can come in with our block quote, and we'll say it's the after, but it has content, because if you have pseudo elements, you need to have content on them. So we have a content on there, we'll do a position of absolute uh, width of 15 pixels, and we want a left of say negative, let's do negative two just so it sticks out, top of zero and a bottom of zero. Uh, and of course we need a color on it. So then we set our background and I could say red, but then the issue with that, so there it is, and let's turn off my border. So say you want it to look like this. I don't know why, but let's just say you did. Um, so you have the color that's here, but then if I decided, you know what, that doesn't look so good. I actually want this color to be blue. And you switch that. 
Well, then you have to remember to switch this too. And I know we could use custom properties and really current color is the original, like the OG of um, custom properties because it will always match the color of purple. It will always match the color of the text that you're using here. So even though we have custom properties these days and I'm absolutely in love with them, I do think that current color is something that's probably still a little bit underused and could be, could be pretty cool. So that is current color right there. And since we're here on my block quote, I figure it's the right time to jump into number three, which is the way you can do quote stuff with CSS and falls under like the CSS quotes thing, which is also why I have a quote up here because we'll look at how it works with my quote there. Um, but I think with block quotes, a lot of the time, instead of styling something like this, let's just take all of that off. Uh, what people do is they want like an actual quotation mark and then they come in here and they have to find, you know, you have to go and Google what the, the code is and you come in with whatever it is to try and try and get your, your quotation mark and then you forget. And I know there's some that are uh, easier to remember than others. But did you know, instead of, and don't put this in the quotation marks because if it is, it's just going to write it out. You can just come here and write open quote and it's going to come at the end. <laughs> uh, let's turn off my background and let's put this to it before. So it's at the before and not at the end. And we have an open quote there and I have position absolute. So if I turn that off, it should go into the right spot. So there we go. We have a quotation mark coming in just like that. Uh, but of course you can do a little bit more. You can then do a uh, say font size of three rem or three M. So it mat, you know, grows with it. Opacity of, uh, I don't know, 0.5 uh, left of negative one M top of negative 0.5 M. I'm just guessing right now. That's way too far. There we go. That looks a little bit better. <laughs> so just, you know, play around with your numbers a little bit, get it to go exactly where you want it to go. And you can sort of style it with that just using open quote like this. And there's an extra bonus with this open quote thing. And this is really neat. And it's going to work up here too with that. Um, but if ever you're working on a multilingual site, it's the advantage of using open quote or close quote is check this out. Let's go block quote. Um, and I'm just going to do it on here, but you know, you can do this for your whole site and change the language uh, for the whole site. But if I change the language here to French, it will change my quotation mark to be the French one. Now the positioning of it has gone off because it's a completely different character. So you will have to take that into account if you are doing it for a multilingual site. Uh, but you can see it's the same thing up here on this quote. If I do Lang equals, uh, FR again for French, it's going to change the quotation marks automatically for me. And you can also change, there's open quote, you can also turn off your closing quote so you can add a close quote um, and different things to it. So pretty cool in my opinion and it's nice that you get the multi uh, multilingual functionality that comes along with it. All right, the next one is a mixed blend mode. And this is actually what inspired me to make this a little bit because I came across an article by Anna Tudor on CSS tricks and she made this really cool thing. So <laughs> it's right here where we get this guy going on and I'm gonna link to this, this is hers. I'm also gonna link to the CSS tricks article. Uh, and I thought it was such a cool use case of mixed blend mode. And this is where I went, I'm definitely under using mix, uh, mixed blend modes and I need to start using it more because this is such a cool use case of it. Um, and we can see here there is on the paragraph an isolation of isolate, which is important for how this works, um, or else it would use the background color for the site instead of being like isolated to the paragraph itself. But in, and by doing that, it works really well. And it's set to difference right now. So it's showing like where there's a difference between the two elements. Difference is a weird one, but it works perfectly in this use case. I know and check that. I didn't even realize she was using current color there. But let's change this over to a URL. And this is, this could make things kind of interesting where if you if you had this with an image instead of just a color. So um, I'm just going to use on splash uh, it slash 400 doesn't really matter. Um, it's going to come in as an image. There's the difference. Let's make that like 100. I want to make sure it's fitting. There we go. Um, so we can see it looks really funky like that, but this is where, and well, you know what, background size cover. So it's not too weird. And I, I wouldn't necessarily use it like this, but then we could come in with like a multiply. Um, and by doing that, then you get sort of this, that type of effect going on, or maybe you want an overlay and you get all the different men, uh, blend modes that can come in. Um, lighten as well. Uh, lighten as well, which might not work too well actually at all with this. Oh, there we go. It is working a little bit. So you get these different sort of options and blending things that can go on with 
the mix blend mode. And it's something that I want to start exploring more, especially after seeing this example of difference that I thought was really cool. So full props to Anna for that one. And if you'd like to see a video where I deep dive mix blend mode a little bit more, leave a comment down below and let me know because I haven't made a video on it. I've looked at background blend modes, but I've never looked at mix blend mode. Anyway, let's keep on going to the last one, which is number five. We're all the way at the end already, and it is on columns and CSS columns. I've talked about them before. Um, I think they're really, really cool. And this is where you could just come on to an element and let's just go look how I've organized this. So here I have a div class of columns, ignore the flow, it's just for spacing. Um, but I have my columns and then I have my paragraphs that are set up right here and just like that. And no flex box, no grid. I just say columns three and guess what? I get three columns. <laughs> there we go. We get three columns. They're, they're working. It's cool. Uh, there are a few interesting things with this because it's breaking this paragraph in the middle, as you can see, and this paragraph is breaking over some columns. So that's kind of neat. Maybe that's what you want to do. And this is really, really fun and cool. Uh, the one thing with it is it's not really responsive, but ah, guess what? I can actually make this responsive. I can give it sort of like a minimum or ideal size. And as soon as I do that, and this is, this is a shorthand um, where it's being broken up a little bit. There's a lot more detail that we could go into this, but I just want to give you an overview of it. I have a video that does deep dive it and goes into more. Um, but you can see here that it goes to two and then it will go to three columns. You might say they're getting kind of close. We can come in with a gap of 2M. Um, and it's going, the gap is going to work. I think this is where gap actually came from originally before it got into grid or flexbox. So we have that, that's really cool. Um, and this, there is one gotcha with this though, depending on the use cases you want to use it for, which is, let me just comment this back in, which is if you're using it for content like cards or something like that, where you have borders or background colors or stuff, it will break across columns by default. And that's really, really awkward, right? If something like that happens. Um, so generally, if you had this type of content, you wouldn't want that to happen. So what you can actually do is on the element itself, you can come in and say break inside a void. And as soon as you do that, now the elements won't break inside and you get this responsive thing that works really well. And you'll notice one other difference with it other than like with Flexbox or with Grid and stuff is this element is actually like going, it's in its own column. So it can drop down and this doesn't start after that one because it's not making rows. This is all just based on columns and looking at the, col the, the stuff in the rows. So it's almost like a masonry layout. But the big difference is a masonry layout will go left to right. This does go up, down, and then back up to the top, and then down, and then like that. So sometimes it's not exactly what you're after. But I do think there's lots of cool use cases that we could be using columns, and we're probably not using them enough. As I said, you can do a little bit more with the column property than I explored here. So if you'd like more details on it or to dive deeper, you can check out this video that is right here. And with that, a really big thank you to both Zach and Randy, who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.